suggesting that his preseason was not great. Average, whatever. I believe is that a shirt? Is that a Patriots shirt this season? Not great, average, whatever. But then went on to talk I, for another five minutes, being like, "But maybe it was good." I, I like. So what? What are we doing? Yeah. But he knows he, that that Drake may outplayed him. Yes. He knows it. Yeah. And that's a guy who's been in the league for ten years, Wiggy, right. or more. Yeah. I, like. So I I don't I I I I just I get it. The offensive line stinks. Maybe you're able to grab somebody. Are you able to grab somebody? To, let me ask the professor. Is there somebody today that you can grab that can improve that offensive line, waiver wire wise? Uh, have you seen anybody? There's no. one tackle that got cut by the Titans that you might pick up just because he's a veteran and he's been in the Alex Van Pelt system. He was in Cleveland, then went to Tennessee, but Tennessee cut him because they're going with younger guys. But like outside of that, there's not – I mean, it's slim pickings out okay, there. Okay, so it, it doesn't matter who your starting quarterback is week one. When it comes to the offensive line, they are going to be at risk for, for getting killed. Um, you look at the way Drake may, at least in the preseason – was able to pocket presence wise, uh, scramble first down wise, was able to make something happen when that protection was not what it should be. So I eliminate that because either one of them is going to get hurt and then you're going to have to use the other one. Mm -hmm. So I, if that's your concern in your Gerard Mayo, throw that out the window. You have got, you are looking at a guy that was your number three pick. You picked him so that he could be the future of the franchise. Let him play. To your like, point earlier, Greg, when you said, well, maybe Gerard Mayo, you know, may had this plan and it didn't matter who actually played better. The plan was going to stand. Maybe Jacoby knows that. And that's why, you know, when he's talking to the afternoon show and saying, yeah, I, it could have been better. It wasn't great. And he knows that Drake may outplayed him. He doesn't he doesn't care because he knows that it's his job. Like yeah. it, it uh, look, listening to him. He doesn't seem like a guy who's worried about it. Or, or nervous that he could lose the job. So yeah. maybe you had a good point at the beginning of the show where you said Gerard had this plan in place, and whether it's Gerard or Elliot Wolf or Alex Van Pelt, and they were going to stick to it no matter what we saw during the preseason. Yeah, I mean, I some of the arguments that are made when it comes to those who were high picks and mm -hmm. did or didn't play are just not of relevance to me. Like in the Twitch chat, my guy or my gal, Game Dog, says Eli Manning, number one pick, didn't right. start right away. We've talked about Patrick Mahomes, didn't start right away. Wait a second. Like, Wasn't I, Eli Manning behind Kurt Warner? Did Kurt Warner win a Super uh, Bowl? Well, Eli Manning refused to. He had his whole uh, kerfuffle about where he was Wanted to pick where he was going to go, right? right? If I remember correctly. That, yes, that he did. He uh, did not want to go to uh, uh, the Chargers at the time. Correct. So uh, which it, Drake May did not do, even though he probably thought about it. So he started seven games his rookie year. Mm -hmm. I feel like for yes, he was behind Kurt Warner. I just looked at game one. Kurt Warner was in through 203 yards. Yeah, so I feel like he was behind a super. And I didn't realize it. it, it I didn't realize this. We're talking about Jacoby Brissett here. He only played one year with New England. Right. Why are we holding on to this? Of, and he was only with. Well, I, I, is somebody holding on to that as the reason why? Like, well, I think it was. It's like, not the same system. It's no, but I think it was. Like, it's a completely different. It's Alex Van Pelt system. Right. And he only got playing time because Brady was suspended, right. and then Jimmy Garoppolo got hurt. But I think yeah. it was like, whoa! It became. Oh, remember when he was with New England? There was. It, he doesn't even have as much of a track record as a he's as Brian Hoyer. Yeah. So if no, Brian Hoyer was, if let's say Brian Hoyer was Jacoby Brissett right now. No, it's more about. I'm assuming it's more about his familiarity with Alex Van Pelt than any and and vice versa. Right, but than anything else, he was only with Van Pelt for what one year? Uh, was it two seasons? Cleveland. I thought it, I'm looking at he, I'm looking at his his thing. It says he was only in Cleveland for the 2022 season. Yeah, because he was in Washington last year. Yeah, so he's only been with Alex Van Pelt for one year, 
And prior to that, he was with Miami. Then he was with the Colts for four years where he got his opportunity to be the starter there. And his best year he had it, it with, in, with the Colts, he was seven and eight as a starter. What are we doing here? I, it's just, it, if this was, and this is why I say this, if this was Brian Hoyer and not Jacoby Brissett, wouldn't we, everybody be saying, start Drake May? Yeah. So I don't know why we're not saying the same thing. I mean, we saw Brian Hoyer last season, and some were saying, go back to Mac Jones. Brian Hoyer, right. the quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. I mean, I, you know. So what has he done in his career, Jacoby Brissett, that would make you as an organization go, we need to sit our third overall pick, the future of our franchise potentially behind him? That's – it does – no matter what it is, even Brady talked about it. When you have that high of a draft pick, the te, you know, 10 and up, you don't sit. Dan Marino didn't sit. John Elway didn't sit. The list goes on and on. I don't care whatever year of football you played in. Well, you always go back to Matt Ryan, who was on this show yeah. a couple weeks ago, and he was a number three pick as yeah, well. He didn't sit. Matthew and Stafford was the number one overall pick. You're, you're, you're picking in the top five, top ten for a reason because you're not very good. But then do you have Mayo on this show Monday talking about how we all know what happens when you ruin a rookie quarterback or whatever, if you can find that shine, whatever it is that he said. This is Victor Victor from Norton. Hey, Victor. Good afternoon. Oh, well, good morning, I should say, ladies yes, and gentlemen. Listen, yes, yes. Joe Milton the third. all right? And here's why. Because either way, with Jacoby Brissett, over Drake May, you're gunning for four and thirteen. The worst thing for them to do is be eight and nine, nine and eight, and you're stuck in the middle. So you're telling me I think either Jacoby or Joe can get you that result, but with a terrible offensive line, you need a mobile quarterback. And the worst thing that can happen, or the best thing in theory, is what if J Joe Milton turns into Lamar Jackson and you go thirteen and four? You're now all of a sudden the contending team, yeah. and then you got a number one quarterback in Drake May that you don't know is good or bad. That is tradable for draft capital. Okay. I say go JM three. So you're saying, and wow. and I I just never believe that this is an organizational intent, but you are suggesting that they are looking at it and going, we don't want to win more than three games. Mm -hmm. And so, and we don't want to get our our number three pick quarterback killed while we're doing it. So we are in full tank mode. We're just not. We're not well, going to tell every anybody that. That's what you're saying. It, it, it's not. It's not that they want to. It's that's what they have on the field with the offensive line that they have. You just you saw it during preseason. The possibility of Jacoby getting hurt and all that stuff. Why put Drake May in the middle of that? And then you've got an offensive mobile quarterback in Joe Milton the third that can run away from that terrible offensive line and Lord knows what he can do. If he like I said, he turns into somewhat of a Lamar Jackson, holy smokes, we've got something at whatever, one point two million dollars. And you can you've got Drake May as draft capital to get you now more offensive weapons because we know that no free agents are coming here. Well, I love that one. So your third overall pick, you drafted him to go, okay, let's make him our third string quarterback. <laughs> So that was the move, and then j hopefully Joe Milton play, you know, balls out, and now you can then trade the third overall pick quarterback, which teams are going to be like, well, he's an unknown, and then get a bunch of draft capital back. I mean, what have you seen? Because you've paid a lot of attention, and I'll ask the professor as well. What have you seen from Drake May that says to you he must be the starter week one? What have I seen? His ability to be, be able to just control and run the huddle. And and Courtney always brings this up. He doesn't look like he gets he gets flustered. Nope. You know, he looks like he stays even kill. If he makes a bad play, he doesn't get too too low on himself. If he makes a great play, not too high. Just even kill as of right now. But it, he it looks like he has control of the huddle in the operation. And when once the ball is snapped, like he has authority over every play. He slides in the pocket. His movement in the pocket has been mm. exceptionally good. He's making decisions quickly, right? Like that that play, Greg, that you talked about on third down where he's backed up in his own end zone, he looks at his first read, pump fakes, tries to dr pull the corner in, doesn't pull the corner, immediately tucks it and goes for the first down. Like, it is just 
the the decision making, the instincts are all there. Everything is there for him to go out and play. And it's honestly more so just like if the rest of the team around him was any better, like they would be a legit like a legitimate football team. They would be good right out of the gates. Like that's how that's how good this kid is. He's also, I mean, I he, he he's I think he should be considered a reasonably mobile quarterback. Yeah, he's very a, much so. Yeah, he's when a, you're talking about Joe Milton. Like yeah. I, Drake May is a mobile quarterback. Yeah, he's he's not he's not like uh, you know he's not Lamar Jackson, but no, nobody is. But he can not, move. He's not your guy, Cam Newton. But no, no, but he does. can move though. Yeah, I mean, I I just I don't think like when I look at him, there's not enough out there to be like, okay, he's a great decision maker because defenses are playing basic. We don't know if he can actually do that. I'm just looking at, does he have the ability to get the offense in and out of the huddle without having delay game penalties? Does he at least look like, okay, he has a skill set where if things are going well around him, he's got enough ability to make plays, whether it's throwing or running. And that's what we're going to look for all year. And those did are two you, checks. Did you find that Mayo cut? Can we hear that? This is Gerard Mayo on this show Monday. It was a developmental plan. You know, the reason that, you know, we were excited to get Jacoby here, he had a good understanding uh, of the offense. And, you know, he's a great leader, great mentor. He could mentor a guy like Drake and also, you know, teach him some of the playbook, uh, some of the reads and, and things like that. And, you know, for us, you know, we've all seen the horror stories of sometimes rookie quarterbacks just, you know, getting thrown to the wolves and, and they fall apart. And we didn't want that to happen. Now, I'm not saying that would happen with Drake at all uh, because he is a mentally tough person and he shows great resilience and, and control of the ball. Um, but the plan, look, it's a, it's a, I'm not going to get too in-depth with the plan, but just know that, you know, his development to this point has, uh, has worked out the way that we anticipated. So what are the horror stories of rookie quarterbacks being thrown to the wolves? Sam Darnold? I mean, I, Recent, uh, Zach recent, no. Wilson, maybe Zach Wilson, like that's on Z his. That's on Zach Wilson. Yeah, that was a bad pick. Sam Darnold like, was the one seeing ghosts. That yes. wasn't the Jets. Yeah. No, that, was the, that was Bill Belichick's Patriots defense Correct. that mm -hmm. made him see ghosts. Zach Wilson that, also didn't seem like mentally like he wasn't strong enough to handle it. It was just his skill set. Well, the whole like, thing was a disaster. Like you got guys on your offensive line. Wearing shirts uh, promoting the other guy. Mm -hmm. I, like, White, I, I mean, yeah. I, and, uh, you know, yes, that's a that's a confidence deflator, I think. But even after Zach Wilson's first wow. year as a starting quarterback, there were still some people out there that goes, "Oh, this kid got talent because look at this specific game." We we did it with Mac Jones, right? There were games we looked at. I think last year it might have been, was it the Vikings game last year? We had a really good yes. game. So On Thanksgiving, yeah. Well, we look and go. Oh, look at this game, or look at that game. That's what I would like with Drake May. He could have a bad year and a down year, but I want to be able to see those couple of games where we go. Oh, if he does have a legit weapon at wide receiver, if he does have the proper offensive line, he looks like he has the skill set to have those games more consistently. That's well, what I, I want to see listen, with him. We will most likely find out. What the plan is at 1.15 today when Gerard Mayo speaks. Yeah. So if that plan was to start Jacoby Brissett for the first four games of the season, then and they're sticking with that plan, then you're going to find out today that that may indeed be what the plan was. Right. I don't know. Get ready and to like, queue up red zone for the first couple right. weeks. <laughs> Unless Gerard texts us and right. says, hey, <laughs> little heads up here. Well, you have his number. Uh, no, uh, I don't have his number. Yeah, he said on the show that you should text him. Oh, I did he gotta, not say that? Oh, I got. If I had it, I'm gonna have to try to get his number. And say, hey, do you remember who he is? Yes, I know who okay. Gerard Mayo is. I don't know if, if you have trouble with names. Yeah, no, I know, I know who uh, he is. Our guest, Lonnie Paxton, our guest on the show. When was that? Was, uh, last, was that last, last week? Last week. Yeah, the day um, Minko was here. Sent, no, sent me a picture yeah. last night, Lonnie. Mm -hmm. which you can see now if you're watching the show on Twitch or on YouTube. I don't know when this was, but, Wiggy, that, that's you and Lonnie. Mm -hmm. I have to uh, look at it. Do you remember when that was? Cause this you're, was. You're holding the Lombardi. Yeah, this was um, when. It looks, like, it looks like Fridays in high school because yeah. you have jeans and your jersey on. <laughs> yeah, well, this was when we had the. <laughs> Uh, 2001 reunion, 20-year uh, reunion versus the Rams at Gillette. You look good. 
I oh, appreciate you look that. Look happy. Yeah, I'm many, always happy. How many of your teammates can you identify in that photo? Okay, so next to me, we obviously know that's Teddy Bruschi. Yeah. Um, and then you got number forty four. Yes, there. that is. Hold on, let me. I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> I keep. I for some reason I, I I know. Um, that's oh, <laughs> Jesus. Why am I we'll drawing? move on to another one uh, and see. Okay. Maybe you can come back next to next to the fullback. Oh, Mock Edwards. I'm sorry. Okay. Next to Mock Edwards is J.R. Redman, right, number twenty one. Behind 21. behind J.R. Redman is uh man, Big Willie Mac. Willie, Willie McGinnis. Yes. Back there. To the right of Willie with the red hat on, that's uh, Antoine Smith. Okay. In front of Antoine with the glasses on, that is Bobby Hamilton. Ooh, we love okay. We love Sh Big Ham. Sh Sugar Ray. Behind Bobby, um, we can only see the glasses in the bald head. That's uh, the guy that we love. That's the one and only Matt Chatham. <laughs> like when he's pausing, uh -huh. like buying himself some yeah. time. You know uh, that guy, we love him. All right. Uh, okay. Good. You're doing pretty good. In front of Matt... Huh? Oh, is that Antoine Harris? Okay. Might be Antoine Harris. Right. Pretty then good, Wiggy. To the right of him is out the love. Okay. Behind me is Troy Brown. Oh. Behind Lonnie is Loya Malloy. Behind Loya Malloy is Ted Johnson. Behind Ted Johnson is Damian Heward. Ooh, yes. um, behind Speaking of backup quarterbacks. Yep. Behind uh, Troy Brown with the hat on us, my man, Big Troy Rod. Troy Brown's head looks photoshopped in. Yep. Is that just me? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Well, good job, Wiggy. Yeah. Right. That was good.